fourth generation form, BMW X5 demonstrates the brand's latest advances in technology, design and safety. Most importantly though, it's once again difficult to better in the large SUV segment if you prioritise a dynamic drive. The result is a car that, though no longer head and shoulders above the competition, can still set the standard most of them aspire to. As the Munich maker puts it, the boss is back. The BMW X5. It was the car that back at the turn of the century completely changed the way we thought about large plush 4x4s. The car that more than any other defined the modern luxury SUV. And the one that since the turn of the millennium, almost every other prestige brand has sought to copy. Without this Munich model, we probably wouldn't have Porsche Cayennes, Range Rover Sports, Mercedes GLEs, Audi Q7s, or any of the other copycat offerings that now populate the premium large SUV sector and seek to steal sales from the car we're going to look at here. The fourth generation X5 launched late in 2018. BMW doesn't actually like the term SUV with its clunky connotations and has always marketed this car as an SAV or sports activity vehicle, so the tag never really caught on. It was justified though when applied to the original 1999 E53 generation model, introduced at a time when the 4x4 class was mainly populated by big ladder frame chassis vehicles that looked more at home on a farm. By the time the Mark II E70 variant arrived in 2000, 2007, though, the segment looked very different. So it was just as well that in this form, the X5 had become larger, smarter, and more efficient. That was a trend continued by the subsequent F15 series, third generation design launched in 2013, which pushed sales over the 2.2 million mark by the time this G05 series Mark IV version arrived five years later. As you'd expect, this fourth generation X5 moves the game on a little further again, offering what, on paper at least, BMW claims to be the best combination of performance, luxury and efficiency in its class. Air suspension is now standard on mainstream models and there's the option of an active chassis system for variable ride height and adjustable dynamics. Plus, this X5 is significantly larger than its predecessors, which allows for the installation of an optional third seating row if you want it. And the interior now features a big upgrade in cabin quality, enough to shame some segment rivals. There's also a new level of media connectivity, great strides forward in camera-driven safety and the latest elements of the Munich Maker's autonomous driving technology, which is all welcome, but the competition's tougher than ever before, with some rivals claiming better driving dynamics, extra practicality and greater luxury. With all that in mind, can this car really be what BMW claims it is, the most complete car in its segment? Let's find out. The X5 might have developed significantly over its four generations, but there's been one constant. It's always driven well. Actually, perhaps we're understating things there. Thinking back, the original E53 series Mark I model actually left us a bit dumbfounded. How could something so big and high corner like a sporty saloon? Well, back at the turn of the century, we couldn't quite understand it, and not much has changed since. As a result, you now approach this BMW expecting it to be a good drive. To dilute that talent would be to lose the point of the car. It would be like an uncomfortable Rolls-Royce, a dull Ferrari, or a reliable TVR. The Bavarian maker has, of course, been careful to preserve that attribute with his Mark IV G05 series model. As ever, the X5 has its priorities right, developed for tarmac use first and foremost, 
with BMW cheerfully emphasising the X-Drive 4x4 system's priority in maximising on-road traction at the expense of off-road capability. They'll happily explain how, instead of mounting the engine and gearbox up high to be clear of water, as you'd get in any serious-minded SUV, they've mounted them low and as far back as possible for an aggressive centre of gravity to help spirited cornering. The result is a machine that on a twisting country road really doesn't feel very SUV-like at all, which is why the Bavarians call it an SAV, or sports activity vehicle, instead. Whether anything weighing up to 2.2 tonnes in weight and nearly 1.8 metres in height can ever defy the laws of physics enough to match BMW's description of this model as a driver's car is another question. But there's no doubt that body control really is excellent for a vehicle of this kind. Drive down a bumpy back lane and you can feel the suspension working hard to keep the passenger cell serene and avoid the sort of nodding head syndrome that some cruder large SUVs still exhibit. But these, of course, don't include this X5's most direct rivals, cars of the quality of Porsche's KN, Mercedes GLE and the Range Rover Sport. To match the improved versions of these contenders over tarmac, this BMW needed to up its game. Has it? On paper, it certainly looks like it. There certainly seems to have been a refocusing of key priorities in developing this fourth generation model. So no pointless four cylinder engine or two wheel drive options this time round. Nor are buyers confused by the complicated array of suspensional permutations that afflicted the previous F15 series design, none of which seemed quite right. BMW's finally settled on the kind of standard damping setup that a modern era mainstream X5 should have, a two axle air sprung system that can adapt itself for either on or off-road use. It doesn't deliver quite perfect ride quality. Potholes can still be felt more than perhaps you'd want, probably because the Munich maker has stuck with single chamber air springs rather than the more absorbent multi-chamber variety. But it's a big improvement on what was offered before. As for what lies beneath the bonnet, well, the brand hasn't been brave enough to follow Porsche's lead and dump diesel, but you can understand why, given that the vast majority of X5 buyers continue to want fuel from the black pump. Most of them are likely to choose the X-Drive 30D variant we're trying here. It gets a revised 265 horsepower version of the straight six single turbo three litre diesel used previously, combined with an improved eight speed Steptronic Sport Auto gearbox featuring wider ratios, slicker change electronics and even launch control. This engine propels this car along at a very respectable rate of knots, really getting into its stride between two and three and a half thousand RPM, particularly if you take control control yourself via the steering wheel paddle shifters. 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 6.5 seconds en route to 143 miles an hour. There's 620 newton meters of torque too, though that's still not enough for a really class competitive brake towing capacity. For an X5 xDrive 30D, that's rated at just 1.9 tonnes, a figure which for some reason is well below the 2.7 tonne capacity that applies to other mainstream variants. Should you require a higher level of straight line performance from your diesel X5, your dealer will point you instead to the M50D variant, which uses a multi-stage turbocharging system composed of two high pressure and two low pressure turbochargers. The combined setup delivering 400 horsepower and 760 newton meters of torque. That's enough to trim the standard sprint time down to 5.2 seconds and allow for a maximum speed that BMW has to cap off at 155 miles an hour. At times, an M50D can feel almost supercar quick, faster than an Audi R8 V10 in the 30 to 70 mile an hour overtaking increment, and as quick as a Lamborghini Murcielago over a standing kilometer. With this kind of pace on offer, it's appropriate that BMW equips the M50D with a standard M Sport differential, an electronically controlled rear differential lock powered by an electric motor and governed by the car's DSC or Driving Stability Control System. When cornering at speed, this setup allows as much as 1,500 newton meters of drive torque to be redirected from a faster turning wheel to a slower turning one, helping to fire you from bend to bend. 
We'll also point out that the M50D has got very good brakes and for a diesel it also makes a pretty good noise. Mind you, all versions of this BMW sound pretty good, our relief, thanks to a clever bit of software that enhances the engine note through the stereo speakers. You're always going to get a purer sound from a petrol unit though, and the X5 lineup has some pretty accomplished ones. Things kick off with the XDrive 40i, which offers 340 horsepower from yet another straight six three litre unit. This one assisted by twin scroll turbocharging and good for 0 to 62 miles an hour in 5.5 five seconds en route to 151 miles an hour. Essentially the same engine also features in another petrol X5 variant you can ask your dealer about, the X-Drive 45E iPerformance plug-in hybrid. Here a 282 horsepower version of the 3 litre 6 pairs up with a 112 horsepower electric motor fed by a lithium ion battery pack, delivering a 0 to 62 mile an hour in 5.6 seconds and a top speed of 146. Under battery power alone, an X-Drive 45E is supposed to be able to reach 86 miles an hour or, if you drive more reasonably, achieve an electric driving range of up to 50 miles. If efficiency issues don't concern you in buying this car, then you'll be amongst the fortunate folk for whom nothing but a V8 petrol X5 will do. Either the X-Drive 50i or the flagship X5M motorsport tune variant. Whatever your choice of engine, it will come packaged up with BMW's usual drive performance control driving mode system. The normal Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus settings as usual tweak steering, throttle response, gear change timings and stability control thresholds to suit the way you want to drive. And they influence ride quality too, thanks to the standard variable damping control setup. For those who can't decide between the modes available, there's an extra adaptive setting that you'll probably end up selecting nearly all the time, just as we've done. The advantage of doing that not only lies in your being relieved of the need to make decisions about driving setup, the computer software does that for you. It also lies in the way that predictive technology is introduced into the process, the system using the sat-nav to prime the car for upcoming hazards like sharp bends or junctions. It all works so smoothly that you're never really aware that so much is going on behind the scenes to make your journey smoother and more efficient. But that's the kind of system that would complete the luxury demeanour of a rival Mercedes, Audi or Volvo SUV in this segment. As we said right at the beginning of this section, the X5 aims to be more than just a large luxury saloon on steroids. The previous F15 series version only could be if you spec'd it up with all kinds of expensive engineering options. This replacement G05 series car in contrast feels more alive and responsive whatever form you choose it in, despite the fact that it carries about 40 kilos more weight than its predecessor, especially if you click into one of the sport driving modes that activate the air suspension and drop the car 20 millimeters closer to the tarmac at speeds of over 86 miles an hour. The steering significantly more feelsome and body controls a touch tighter through the bends, especially if you opt for the M50D variant that as standard swaps the air suspension for stiffer M Sport steel springs, though can be optioned back to pneumatic spec if you wish. Whatever X5 you go for though, you'll get yourself the only large SUV in the class that could keep a Porsche Cayenne in sight if driven at speed on twisting tarmac. As all this is happening, a sport display in the car section of the Centre Dash infotainment display can show you G-force readings plus torque horsepower, oil temperature and turbo boost readouts. The speed with which the X-Drive four-wheel drive system subtly shuffles power around through the bends really helps the handling, of course. The latest version of this setup is now able to split drive torque between the front and rear wheels with greater precision and continues to offer a rear-based drive distribution appropriate to this BMW's dynamic demeanour. As usual, the system's based around a Haldex-style multi-plate clutch that can push up to 80% of drive to either the front or the rear wheels to suit whatever tractional needs you happen to have. 
X5 buyers who like the idea of power going to both ends of this car might also like the idea of steering taking place at both front and rear axles too. That's what you get with the optional Integral Active Steering System, which uses a variable steering rack ratio that works as you turn the wheel, moving the rear wheels in either of two ways, depending on how fast you're going. At parking speeds, the rear wheels will turn in the opposing direction to those at the front for greater manoeuvrability. If you're going much more quickly at speed through tight corners, the rear wheels will turn in the same direction as those at the front, giving you greater stability and agility. If you go for that M50D variant that we just mentioned, you'll be offered an optional adaptive M suspension professional package that combines the integral active steering system with BMW's anti-roll stabilisation technology. This setup uses automatically adjustable anti-roll bars that give you lots of suspension movement for a great ride in a straight line, yet spring into action through the bends to compensate for the body roll you'd otherwise get. And of course, when you match all this up to the benefits of that adaptive driving performance control setting we were talking about earlier, with predictive navigation data that anticipates and allows for the next bump or turn, you have all the ingredients for a beautiful ride and handling balance. There's even a degree of semi-autonomous driving capability if you then further add in all the many and varied electronic camera-driven features that come with the optional driving assistant professional pack. Even if you choose not to equip your X5 with all of this kind of kit, it's an exceptional accomplished highway touring device. One of the things you notice most quickly about the X5 in this G05 series form is just how refined it now is. Independent tests have measured it being three decibels quieter at a cruise than the notably silent diesel version of the rival Audi Q8 we recently tested. On ordinary tarmac, we've not tried a quieter SUV in this class. It's worth mentioning, though, that on broken asphalt, the big, wide tyres generate significantly more roar. We'll finish as we usually do with an SUV with a few words on the provision, or more usually lack of provision, of off-piste prowess. The xDrive 4x4 system on offer here might not be set up for mud plugging, but it's still more capable than most owners will ever need it to be, using its electronically actuated multi-plate clutch and the cleverness of BMW's dynamic stability control system to alter drive from the normal 40-60 front-to-rear bias to 100% front or rear as necessary. As before, hill descent control is standard to ease you down slippery slopes, and this time around, the addition of standard air suspension means that the meagre ground clearance of the previous model can now be dramatically improved. If you use this centre console switch, you can raise the body in two stages up to a maximum of 40mm above its standard setting, and its loftiest point you'll be sitting 264mm from the deck. When you are off tarmac, the optional Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera system is a boon, allowing you to see images of each individual wheel on the infotainment screen as if you were viewing them from the outside. So, if you're about to drive over a rock, a tree root or a precipice, you can see it. Plus, there's an X-View screen in the car section of the centre dash infotainment display that shows you your air suspension setting, compass bearings, your altitude and driving angles. For that rare breed of X5 buyer likely to be regularly using this car on rough trails, the Munich Maker now offers an optional X off-road pack. This gives you a sump guard, specific driving screen interfaces and a series of transmission and suspension settings for various different surfaces. The additional modes badged X sand, X rocks, X gravel and X snow. Earlier, we were talking about the way that the M50D variant's electronically controlled rear differential lock aided tarmac cornering traction. Well, the X off-road pack also includes this feature, but here its purpose is to help you gain extra grip when driving over loose ground or on slippery surfaces offering differing levels of grip for the left rear and right rear wheels. If you're considering the X off-road pack option, you should probably complete it with a set of capable 20-inch all-terrain tyres.
Overall, it could be argued that in specking up an X5 for ultimate mud plugging prowess, you're somehow missing the point of this car. Or you could take the point of view that a version of this BMW specified in X off-road form would be close to being the ultimate tarmac or trail conveyance. Both perspectives are valid. Either way, they're based around a pretty complete product. BMW tends to describe X5 styling as deliberately evolutionary, which means design changes chosen carefully so as not to alienate existing buyers. That's hardly an approach geared towards innovation, but it's appropriate as part of the more subtle interpretation of the crossover genre that's provided by this model's sports activity vehicle branding. Under the skin lies the cluster architecture platform used in the company's luxury saloons, and it's provided for a significant increase in size this time round. The 66mm width enhancement actually makes this G05 series design wider than its X7 Big Brother, and compared to the old F15 series model, is 42mm longer and 19mm higher. So, it'd be an imposing thing... Even without this vast and somewhat oversized front grille, these huge corner outlets and this substantial lower intake, all of it presumably intended to frighten fast lane dawdlers into submission. The traditional kidney grille shaping remains, but this time around the whole thing gets a single piece surround, incorporates active air flaps and includes slats that reflect your trim choice. Chrome for X-Line models and gloss black for M-Sport variants. Now separated from this appendage, are the headlights, which as you'd expect are of the full LED variety. BMW hopes you'll want to update them either with adaptive functionality or preferably with its laser light technology that we've got here that delivers a 500 meter high intensity beam. Whatever your choice, you're certainly not going to mistake this X5 for a Mercedes or an Audi when it appears in your rear view mirror. It might not be especially pretty, but it's certainly distinctive and yes, still classy. From the side, you get more of a feel for the sheer size of this car these days. Put an original E53 series X5 alongside this one, and it would look very small indeed. There's a bit more profile attitude than this car's direct F15 series predecessor had. The waist level crease now steps up over the rear door handle, and the lower swage line now angles itself away from the vertical air breather that remains behind the front wheel. To suit the current zeitgeist, those arches now house larger rims. Even base X-Line variants get 19 inches, and it's possible to get anything up to 22-inch alloys if you're happy to keep your chiropractor on speed dial. We've got 21-inch M light rims here, through the spokes of which you glimpse the blue calipers of the upgraded M Sport braking system. Subtle roof rails come in matte, aluminium, or as in this case, in high gloss shadow line black. The rear end makes rather less of a statement. The distinctive L shaped tail light clusters of the old model have been replaced by these more generic horizontal units, and as a result, if you were to remove the badge work, you might struggle to recognise this car's brand provenance from a casual tailgate glance. The lamps get full LED illumination of course and the obligatory skid plate is built into the lower part of this more widely styled bumper. Whether all this really works is something we could discuss at length. What isn't up for debate, BMW promises, is the style, quality and sheer class of the cabin, which, if you've an iPhone and have specified the comfort access option, can be accessed with just a screen click, so there's no need for any kind of key. As you may be, we're deeply suspicious of this kind of technology, though the Munich maker boasts about how difficult the incorporated NFC chip is to hack. But in any case, we think it's much nicer to use this classy display key, another option, which incorporates in a tiny integrated touchscreen. This allows all kinds of remote functionality. So, for instance, you can see if you've locked the car, check how much fuel remains and even pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get in. The previous generation model was already very nice to sit in, but here things feel more upmarket still. 
with a glut of more sophisticated and better incorporated digital screen technology. And that's matched with some lovely use of leather and very high quality plastics, plus the careful application of real metal finishing rather than metal effect plastic. Just look at the intricacy of the parts, the use of textures and the design effort that's been put into something as simple as this door panel, for example. So yes, we really like the way that BMW has approached this cabin. It's not as muted and deliberately understyled as an Audi Q7, nor as brash and in your face as the latest generation Mercedes GLE. Instead, it plots a middle way that for us hits the mark perfectly. The extra interior space delivered by that larger body will be evident if you've upgraded from the previous model. Plus, fit and finish are virtually faultless and the structural integrity achieved by the American Spartanburg plant doubtless contributes to gains made in noise refinement that BMW claims have resulted in a significant sound reduction at speed. You sit a fraction lower than you would in some other SUVs, which accentuates the sportier feel, gripping a lovely tactile three-spoke wheel through which you glimpse instrumentation that's a model of class and clarity. After years of bringing us rather half-hearted digital instrument displays that weren't completely configurable, BMW's finally bitten the bullet and delivered here a decently sized and properly customizable instrument binnacle screen as part of its new live cockpit professional package. That combines this 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster display with a center dash infotainment monitor of the same size. All of it accessible via touchscreen, the usual lower iDrive touch controller and your voice. The latter element working via a new Hey BMW voice recognition system that most owners will find easier to get to grips with. What we've not yet mastered and think you might struggle with is the brand's gesture control functionality. That's thanks to sensor response that's frustratingly patchy unless precisely the right kind of motion is performed, often leaving you in a situation where you're doing nothing more than making what appear to be obscene gestures at other road users. Anyway, the big picture is that it all represents a very decent step forward over what was offered before with wondrous graphics and thoughtful functionality. The instrument binnacle screen can at last show proper sat-nav mapping, though it still isn't quite as configurable as rival setups. You have to have these octagonal half dials, whatever screen layout you choose. But there's no doubt that the whole instrument display and iDrive infotainment monitor combination is much easier and safer to use than the twin control screens you get in the latest Audi and Range Rover models. Perhaps it's churlish to nitpick, seeing as so much effort's being made, but we're going to anyway, pointing out that the opposite swinging needles for the virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges are a bit confusing and bemoaning the fact that BMW still hasn't properly got on board with smartphone mirroring. You only get Apple CarPlay as standard for the first year and Android Auto functionality isn't offered at all. Yes, the sort of thing you'd get as standard on a Fiesta. None of which should overshadow the fact that BMW has matched and in some cases exceeded the current media connectivity class standard here. A sidebar menu on the center screen gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options that connect you into features like the 10 speaker DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat nav, a Wi-Fi hotspot and a 50 gigabyte hard drive, all of its standard fare as is a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying info and a wide range of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software too. Bear in mind though that some of the digital services on offer come included only for three years and some, like online connected music and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar, for just three months. After that, you've got to pay. To some extent, you can't help feeling that it's a case of the Munich maker giving with one hand and taking away with the other. Aside from the issues surrounding connectivity, there's precious little not to like. BMW seems to have a better handle than most makers on which functions are needed on the dash and which can live within on-screen menus. And the brand's standard comfort spec seats are superbly supportive, incorporating lumbar adjustment that can be moved up and down as well as in and out. 
In addition, a range of little touches make a lot of difference, like the way that temperature readouts are shown on small screens on the climate control panel rather than hidden away in monitor menus. We really like the light panels on the doors that illuminate red when opened to act as a warning to other road users. The optional head-up display projects in large-scale 3D and shows more information than systems of this sort usually do. And the fact that you can see the tops of the front rings from the driver's seat gives you a feeling of manoeuvrability and control marred only slightly by the chunky rear pillars between the rearmost side windows and the tailgate. You're never going to struggle to park this car, though, even if you haven't paid extra for the Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera system we've been trying here. All X5s get all-round sensors, a rear view camera and a standard reversing assistant that activates with green or red strips on the steering wheel spokes and automatically reverses you along whatever path you'd previously taken forward. What else? Well, cabin storage is pretty well catered for. This stowage area at the bottom of the centre stack is accessed by this beautifully damped lid that slides back to reveal a wireless charging mat along with USB and 12 volt ports and twin cup holders that can even be heated and cooled, one of our favourite options on this car. There's also this twin lidded box between the seats which incorporates a USB port, a decently sized glove box, a storage cubby by the driver's right knee and large door pockets including bottle holder mouldings that are angled so that they're easier to get at. Only an overhead sunglasses compartment is missing. All this practicality has been delivered with a touch of extra luxury too. The upgraded quilted style Vanaska leather, the multicolour ambient lighting. Plus, in this particular case, we've also got the optional crafted clarity glass finish package for the gear knob, the fascia volume controller, the iDrive controller and the start-stop button. Time to check out the rear, which is where you'd expect this fourth generation model's extra 42 millimetres of wheelbase length to pay dividends. And sure enough, once you take a seat in the second row, you'll quickly appreciate the extra leg and shoulder space on offer if you've owned an earlier generation version of this car. Taking a third person back here is easier too, not only because of this reshaped body's extra width. The centre transmission tunnel's notably low and the middle part of the seat base isn't raised uncomfortably, as is the case with some rivals. Unfortunately, though, the central part of the bench doesn't have an ISOFIX attachment, unlike in a rival Audi Q7, for instance, which might make it difficult to mount three child seats alongside each other something now physically possible. If there are only two occupants back here, you'll be able to use this armrest, which incorporates a storage compartment and pop out cup holders. Seat back pockets are provided and there are decently sized door pockets with bottle holders. Plus, you'll find a storage cubby and a 12 volt socket provided below the central twin vents. You're probably going to want to consider a few options for this part of your X5, and we've got several fitted here. Principally, this huge panoramic sky lounge glass roof. This includes 15,000 graphic patterns that generate an adaptable ceiling display reminiscent of a starlit sky. Another option fitted to this car is the travel and comfort system, which adds in an extra USB port to each seat back, plus a little compartment with a sliding cover, which conceals a multifunction bracket to which folk at the back can attach things like tablets. In this case, we've got four zone air conditioning too, which gives you this extra climate control panel below these twin central vents. This G05 series model's upgraded size will also help if you're amongst the 40% of buyers who will specify the optional third row seating. Don't get carried away though, the two individual extra chairs are still only really intended for children, though they lack Isofix attachments. At least they're straightforward to access thanks to an easy entry function. Here, a section of the middle row eases forward, then tilts upwards towards the headlining at a single stab of a button. These additional extra pews incorporate individual armrests and fold neatly away into the load compartment floor when not in use. Another advantage of having the seven seat option is that it entitles you to a more flexible second row bench with 10 degrees of backrest rake adjustment and 80 millimeters of fore and aft seat based adjustment. 
With the ordinary five-seat model we've got here, the rear bench unfortunately gets none of that. We mentioned the low compartment, so let's have a look at it. This two-piece tailgate is an idea that BMW borrowed from Land Rover when it owned the company a couple of decades back. And with this generation model, the Bavarian brand has got round to making the bottom section electrically powered as well as the top. There's also the option of foot gesture control if you want it. And that bottom part of the tailgate also incorporates a button that will lower the air suspension by 40 millimetres and make it easier to get heavier items inside or to sit on this panel if you want. For instance, to put your Wellington boots on or if you merely like the whole tailgate picnic vibe. Inside the boot, a little disappointingly, given the bodywork's outward dimensional increases, luggage space is still the same as it was on the previous F15 series model, rated at 650 litres, though that'll probably be quite enough for most owners. It's a practical space with a storage compartment on the left and a recess on the right. A bag hook is provided on both sides and there's a 12 volt socket on the right. Unless you've gone for the seven seat option, you'll get this beautifully damped cover for the base of the cargo floor, which rises to reveal a further compartmentalized space. Though that's only available because BMW declines to offer any kind of spare wheel, a cost cutting measure we disapprove of on any kind of SUV. If you need more room, but it's only for long and thin items like skis, you'll be able to push down the centre part of this 40-20-40 split rear bench. But if that's not enough, then the whole bench folds down via these cargo area sidewall catches. Once everything's flat, up to 1,860 litres of space is freed up. Again, that's a little less than you get from obvious rivals, but quite sufficient to suit the needs of the majority of buyers. If you think in terms of around £60,000 as a starting point for mainstream X5 ownership, then you wouldn't be too far out. BMW is still pretty committed to diesel power with this model, but if you're not, then you'll be directed first to the straight six, 340 horsepower X-Drive 40i petrol variant, which from launch was priced from around £59,000. Almost all X5 buyers, though, opt for the X-Drive 30D diesel derivative we're trying here, a 265 horsepower variant that from launch was priced from just under £58,000. From there, there's a big £14,000 jump to the 400 horsepower M50D diesel. In terms of trim, the starting point for the X-Drive 40i and X-Drive 30D models that nearly all X5 customers choose is the very well specified X-Line spec. But BMW expects the vast majority of customers in our market to find the extra £3,500 required for the more dynamic looking M Sport trim level we have here. There's no entry-level four-cylinder two-wheel drive model offered this time round. The thought of an X5 without four-wheel drive wasn't tempting to buyers of the previous generation model. But some interesting petrol engines have been developed for use further up the range. A V8 X-Drive 50i and a plug-in hybrid X-Drive 45e i-Performance variant, which might be of interest if none of the various power plants we've mentioned so far sound quite right for you. The Munich maker also plans a fully-fledged X5M road racer version within this G05 series model's production run too. We'll get into how this X5 stacks up against price-wise against its rivals in a moment. But before we do, it's worth a word about how it fits into the Munich Maker's SUV range these days. Virtually the same money that's being asked of you here will buy you an equivalently specified version of the car that pioneered the coupe subsection of the large SUV segment, BMW's X6. But that model's obviously not as practical as this one and is built around older technology. The company also has an even more luxurious big SUV to offer you these days, the X7, a model that will cost you around £12,000 more in equivalent X-Drive 30D form. 
But let's say you want this X5. Having considered the range structure, you'll need to check out the value proposition on offer here, which sees this contender priced virtually identically to the car many would see as its closest rival, the Mercedes GLE. True, if you're comparing that SUV with the two volume versions of this X5, the xDrive 30D and the xDrive 40i, the equivalent GLE 350D and GLE 400 variants pitch in at around £2,000 more, but that includes a third seating row that would cost extra on this BMW. Basically, your choice between an X5 and a an GLE will really come down to priorities and personal preference. The Mercedes, for example, has a slightly bigger boot. On the other hand, the BMW is a little sharper to drive. Over to you. Of course, there are plenty of other options in this part of the large SUV segment, but nothing else that's quite the same. You'd save around £12,000 by choosing a Volkswagen Touareg or Jeep Grand Cherokee, but both are dull to drive compared to an X5 and only come with five seats, as does Porsche's Cayenne, which can't be had with diesel power and so is also difficult to directly compare. For reference, the closest Cayenne variant to this X5 xDrive 30D, the plug-in petrol version, would cost you around £10,000 more. In search of a close arrival to what's on offer here, we'd be more likely to turn to something like a Maserati Levante, which in base diesel guise would save you about £5,000 over an X5 xDrive 30D, but it would cost significantly more to run and can only be had with five seats. What about Audi? Well, again, it's difficult to match exactly. Their Q7 only comes with seven seats and incomparable 50 TDI S-Line guys wouldn't save you very much over an X5 xDrive 30D. Some would say that a better Ingolstadt match would be Audi's more stylized five-seat Q8, which costs around £5,000 more than an xDrive 30D in 50 TDI S-Line form. But that car is more aimed at the coupe section of the large SUV market, a sector that BMW targets more directly with that swoopier X6 model we mentioned earlier. What else? Well, Volvo's XC90 is a nice product that in comparable D5 diesel form would save you around £5,000 on an X5 xDrive 30D. But it's dull to drive, again, can only be had with seven seats and can't offer you anything larger than a four-cylinder engine beneath the bonnet. What do Land Rover have to offer in this part of the market? Well, a Range Rover Velar looks nice and would save you around £8,000 over an X5 xDrive 30D in comparable D275 form. But like Jaguar's F-Pace, it's a significantly smaller SUV. A Land Rover Discovery is nearer size-wise, but would be seen as a bit of a clunky choice by most X5 owners and wouldn't save you much over an X5 xDrive 30D if you ordered it in comparable 3-litre SDV6 form. A Range Rover Sport would be a closer match, but one of those in comparable 3-litre SDV6 guys would cost you nearly £10,000 more than an X5 xDrive 30D. You see what I mean about it being difficult to find an exact competitor match for this BMW. If you've come to that conclusion for yourself and have decided that for you there's nothing quite like an X5, then you're going to need to know just how generous BMW has been with the standard specs. So let's take a look at that now. Now, as well as xDrive four-wheel drive, all models get the sport version of BMW's eight-speed Steptronic auto transmission, which means that launch control is standard. And of course, as with every BMW, there's drive performance control, so you can fine-tune throttle, steering and gear change response via Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus and Adaptive modes. Standard dynamic damper control means those settings will also tweak ride quality too. We also really like the parking assistant, which takes care of the acceleration, braking, steering and gear changes necessary to manoeuvre into a space. It includes a clever reversing assistant, which remembers the steering movements made during the vehicle's last forward manoeuvre and replicates them when moving backwards. So, for example, it takes over when you're reversing out of a parking position you drove into the previous night or controls the car if you have to reverse backwards for up to 50 yards. It's really clever. 
Beyond all that, the X5 kit list is surprisingly extensive, with even base X-Line trim delivering quite a lot. We're impressed that BMW has thrown in air suspension at this level, an adaptive two-axle setup with 80 millimetres of five-level height adjustment. And you also get 19-inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights, front fog lights, roof rails and alarm, a rear-view parking camera, all-round parking sensors, a powered tailgate, also headlamps and wipers, and a self-parking system that steers you into space. Refreshingly, metallic paint standard too. We've got Arctic Grey here, and inside there's Vanaska leather upholstery, heated electrically adjustable front sport seats, ambient lighting, cruise control, automatic air conditioning, a sport leather steering wheel, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and a wireless phone charging mat. We also like the welcome light carpet that illuminates across the ground to guide you into the cabin when you unlock the doors at night. And there's a fresh level of technology and connectivity too, thanks to BMW's latest live cockpit professional package, which gives you a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster screen and a 12.3-inch sensor dash infotainment monitor, which can be accessed via touchscreen, an iDrive touch controller, your voice or even gesture control. Through both screens, you can access the standard 205-watt 10-speaker hi-fi loudspeaker DAB audio system and the connected navigation setup, which can make proactive routes suggestions as you drive. Plus, there's the latest 4G LTE connectivity, a Wi-Fi hotspot, a 50 gigabyte hard drive and Bluetooth phone pairing too. Which reminds me that BMW has at last included Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on one of its mainstream models, though annoyingly it's only free for the first year. Access to the Android Auto system is still missing. With this fourth generation model, there are plenty more of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services, things like tele-services, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it, and real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. Plus, there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And of course, it will read out text messages to you. X5 buyers now get a standard, a concierge service, that at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive. If you've owned a BMW before, you might be familiar with the standard remote services package that allows you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognise the downloadable BMW Connected app, which also learns frequent journeys and will list them when you're most likely to drive them. If you've decided upon either an X-Drive 40i petrol variant or an X-Drive 30D diesel derivative like this one, it's likely, as we mentioned earlier, that you're going to want to upgrade yourself to some more dynamic-looking M Sport spec. The eye-catching look of this supposedly sportier derivative is hard to resist with its high-gloss shadow line exterior trim, M aerodynamic body styling and bigger 20-inch M star spoke alloy wheels through which you glimpse the calipers of the M Sport braking system. Inside, there's anthracite headlining, illuminated door sill inlays and M-specific finishing for the steering wheel, the floor mat, and the pedals. As you'd expect, the potent M50D variant gets the full M Sport package too, but adds to it quite a lot extra to justify its exalted and pricey status in the range. The wheels are stylish 22-inch V-spoke alloy rims and there's distinct cerium grey finishing for the tailpipes, the mirror housings, the badge work, the side gills and the front kidney grille. You get an upgraded Harman Kardon audio system and adaptive LED headlights that adapt themselves to road conditions and other motorists. Plus, there's a throaty M-Sport exhaust and an M-Sport differential which distributes drive torque evenly to both rear wheels and helps get traction down through the corners. Unfortunately, though, you lose air suspension with this derivative, though you can option it back in if you want, a steel sprung adaptive M suspension package is provided instead. 
On to options. Let's cover off the really key things first. For complete parity with key rivals from Audi, Mercedes and Volvo, you'll need to add in a third seating row for which BMW charges around £1,400 more. A sum which also includes a sliding function for the second row bench, along with middle row backrest adjustment. For family folk with kids, it's a box worth ticking. An optional feature most children would absolutely love is the Sky Lounge two-part panoramic glass roof, which includes 15,000 graphic patterns that generate an adaptable ceiling display reminiscent of a starlit sky. Brilliant. The other headlining optional feature is Integral Active Steering, which turns the rear wheels in either the same direction as the front wheels or the opposite direction, depending on vehicle speed. This allows for effortless lane changes, helps you dart through city traffic and facilitates a tighter turning circle with easier parking. It also optimises cornering agility, which you can further improve on a mainstream variant by paying extra for the M Sport differential mentioned earlier. Also, as we said earlier, the M50D derivative gets this M Sport differential as standard and you can make this desirable variant a really sharp driving tool by going even further and paying extra for what BMW calls its adaptive M suspension professional pack, which is exclusive to this top derivative. This packages up the integral active steering system we were just talking about with anti-roll stabilisation, which compensates for cornering body roll to an almost eerie extent at speed through the bends. In the unlikely event that you're buying a mainstream model and your priorities in X5 ownership lie in regularly driving off a paved service, then you'll want to consider an investment of around 2,600 in the brand's X off-road pack. This includes underguard protection elements, specific ride height settings, an electronically controlled rear differential lock, and four extra off-road driving modes, X sand, X rocks, X gravel, and X snow. A head-up display is included with the pack, and you get special off-road interfaces for this and the two fascia screens. If you want to go further with option box ticking, having perused these keynote features, a good starting point would probably lie with the various packs that BMW offers. All of them, including items that can, of course, also be ordered separately if you wish. Take the Comfort Pack, which adds in rear sun blinds, even more luxurious Comfort Spec seats, heated and cooled cup holders, rear seat heating, and the Comfort Access System, allowing remote powered closing of the two-piece tailgate. Comfort Access also allows you to open this BMW with an Apple iPhone, the unlocking function working with an NFC chip, which the brand says is harder to hack than the standard key. Plus, you can send locking and startup access for your X5 to up to four friends, and because their BMW profile can be stored as part of the brand's so-called open mobility cloud, your X5 will automatically set itself to those people's preferred driving settings when they use your car. All of the comfort pack features just mentioned additionally feature in an even more desirable comfort plus pack that also includes a soft close function for the doors, four zone air conditioning, massaging and cooled ventilation for the front seats and an ambient air package that infuses the interior with eight individually selectable scents. You might also like to look at the visibility pack we've got here that upgrades the headlamps to the brand's more powerful laser light status with its unique X design and adds into them a high beam assist feature and a vast forward range of up to 500 metres. We'd want the technology pack that's been fitted here, which gives you an upgraded 464 watt nine channel Harman Kardon sound system, a head up display and a parking assistant plus surround view camera system, which includes surround view top view and panorama view options and you can even view it through your smartphone. The technology pack additionally includes the achingly cool BMW display key with its built-in colour screen. Amongst other things this clever key allows remote control of the ventilation system so for example you can warm your car up or cool it down while you're having breakfast and on the key screen you'll be able to check whether you close the doors, when a service is due and how much fuel you've got. 
Talking of technology, you can upgrade your X5's cabin entertainment quota quite significantly. We've already mentioned the Harman Kardon sound system, which of course is also a standalone extra. Or if you're a real audiophile, you can go further and get the thumping 1,475-watt, 20-channel Bowers & Wilkins Diamond surround sound system. There's a rear seat entertainment package too, incorporating a couple of 10.2-inch touchscreens, remote controls, wireless headphones and a Blu-ray player. Other the luxury items include a TV tuner and that optional four-zone air conditioning setup, which adds a separately cooled zone in the rear of the car and cools the glove box. An optional acoustic glazing would further improve cabin refinement. What else? Well, you'll need to decide whether to continue with this car's incorporated connected teaser package, which is only free for the first three months of ownership. This builds in Microsoft Exchange 365 to your car so that you can control your inbox and sync your calendar and includes BMW's connected music package. With this, you open an account for unlimited music access with either of BMW's music partners, Deezer and Napster. Then you can listen to all your favourite songs or download them onto the infotainment setup's incorporated hard disk. On to aesthetics. Now, if you're one of those buyers who couldn't resist the allure of M Sport trim, your dealer will prevail upon you to pay more for the M Sport Plus pack we've got here, which gives you larger 21-inch M light alloy wheels, sun protection glazing, and the M Sport exhaust system. If you're really determined to pay BMW more for your choice of paint colour, a sunstone metallic finish is available. The X-Line variants can be specified with aluminium side running boards, and there are various different 20, 21 and 22 inch wheel choices if you don't like the ones provided with your chosen trim level. Inside you can specify softer extended merino leather trim plus you might choose to have the instrument panel and the upper sections of the door cards trimmed in stitched leather and you can add in different styles of trim inlay in glossy striped wood, open poured poplar, silver ash grain or shiny piano black. There's also an available crafted clarity glass finish package for the gear knob, the fascia volume controller, the iDrive controller and the start and stop button. As for practicalities, well, you can, of course, add in a tow bar. It's one of the electrically folding variety, of course. Make sure you ask about adding in run-flat tyres, too. There are no cost option on mainstream models, but you have to ask for them if you don't want to be stuck with a tyre repair kit. For the cabin, there's an optional travel and comfort system, which adds in a couple of extra USB ports at the front and multifunction brackets for the front seat backs, to which rear seat folks can attach things like tablets. Most buyers will probably want the optional luggage compartment package which gives you an electronically adjustable cover for the luggage compartment, rails for the cargo bay floor and a storage net on the left hand cargo bay wall. If you want to stop small items rolling around the boot as you drive, BMW will also sell you a luggage compartment separating net. OK, enough with standard kit and options. Let's go on to consider safety provision. Now, this G05 series generation model has had to meet more stringent safety testing than previous versions. Another reason for the stiffer, wider body shell. This can pass more stringent Euro NCAP challenges like the side pole test, which requires the passenger cell not to deform if the cars crash sideways into a rigid pole at 20 miles an hour, simulating a real-world impact against a pole or a tree. In such a situation, this x 5 curtain airbags could be a lifesaver and of course there are the usual twin front and side bags too plus a driver's knee bag. As you'd expect there are front and rear isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC or cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. 
stop. Tyre pressure monitoring is standard too, as is a speed limit info display that pictures speed signs you pass and displays them on the dash. Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the attentiveness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness. This X5 is the first BMW model to operate this setup with an in-cabin camera rather than steering wheel sensors. The camera constantly scans your eyes for signs of undue exhaustion. We'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, Location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed, point of impact, how hard the seatbelts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. The setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment, immediately after the impact flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistant service directly. We should further mention that to meet current customer expectations, a full range of camera-driven safety features is included. BMW groups the main ones in its ActiveGuard Plus intelligent safety package, the key element of which, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, or as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning with city braking. This system works as these kinds of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one's detected, you'll be warned and the brake Brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. There are two other standard Active Guard Plus features. Lane departure warning with steering impulse alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines. And speed limit information pictures road signs you pass and displays them on the dash. You can then, at the press of a button, program the currently prevailing limit into the speed limit assist system to ensure that you'll never be zapped by a speed camera again. In theory, anyway. If you want more in terms of camera-driven safety tech, then you're going to have to stump up for the Extra Cost Driving Assistant Professional Pack that also includes the choiciest elements of BMW's autonomous driving technology. Let's talk you through that pack. The autonomous driving part of the Driving Assistant Professional Pack lies primarily with two elements. There's the steering and lane control assistant, which makes corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour, though you still have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. We've found that it works particularly well in heavy traffic, and there's active cruise control that regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, even slow you right down to a stop and start you off again. Plus, the Driving Assistant Professional Pack has seven camera-driven safety elements. The first of these, the Lane Keeping Assistant with active side collision protection, incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning, all of which stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and adds in light steering intervention that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road should you veer off line. We also like the crossing traffic warning front feature, which alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're trying to edge out of a junction and can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. Crossing traffic warning rear is a feature that alerts you to oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. There's also an evasion aid that gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow-moving traffic. Plus, there's crossroads warning, incorporating give-way warning, which alerts you to traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. As the name suggests, wrong way warning makes a huge fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. And finally, the rear collision prevention feature detects the potential of a rear end collision and warns traffic behind you to stop by activating the hazard lights. It's all very reassuring. This 
will certainly be the last of the X5 generations to be launched with an overriding emphasis on diesel power. So it's appropriate that the improved black pump fueled engines used here represent a final definitive expression of just how clean and efficient diesel motors are capable of being. To some extent though, that's masked by two things. First, extra weight. The larger body and its extra luxury equipment sees this G05 series design tip the scales 40 kilos heavier than its F15 series predecessor, despite BMW's efforts to lighten things up this time round by fashioning all the body's hinged panels, the front wings and some core structural elements from aluminium. The other factor that rather clouds BMW's efficiency efforts with this car has been the switch in the way the industry now measures fuel and CO2 readings. The WLTP, or World Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure cycle used nowadays, produces much less eye-catching readings than the previous NEDC, or New European Driving Cycle, used to deliver because the testing procedure is more real-world relevant. And in the real world, we've been regularly achieving 40 mpg in mixed motoring from this X5 xDrive 30D model which isn't bad from a 2.2-tonne luxury large SUV that's quicker than a Golf GTI. The official WLTP figures see this volume variant recording 45.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 162 grams per kilometre of CO2 if you go for the standard five-seat version. You'll do fractionally worse than that if you opt for the extra weight of the seven seats. That's significantly better than a rival Mercedes GLE 350D. Opt for the extra power of the 400 horsepower M50D diesel derivative and you're looking at 41.5 mpg and 179 grams per kilometer in five seat form. Both versions of course comply with the current EU 6D temp emission standard which dictates that they must have a gasoline particulate filter. BMW's Blue Performance technology further adds a particulate filter, an oxidation catalyst, an NOx absorption catalyst and an SCR catalyst with AdBlue injection. You'll probably be familiar with AdBlue by now because most modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive that mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine. As the urea combines with these fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious than water and nitrogen. And that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. Tell all that to barstool experts who talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. If you do care about satisfying these people and you want returns that are even better than is possible in any X5 diesel, then you'll need the clever xDrive 45E petrol electric plug-in hybrid variant. There was a petrol plug-in version of the previous F15 series X5, but that used a four-cylinder two-litre engine and wasn't an especially credible alternative to rival Audi Q7 e-tron and Volvo XC90 T8 twin-engine plug-in models. This time round, plug-in X5 buyers get a more serious three-litre six-cylinder power plant that delivers 282 horsepower on its own and is further boosted by a 112 horsepower electric motor fed by a bigger lithium-ion battery pack that is supposed to be able to take you nearly 50 miles between charges, easily enough to cover the average owner's daily commute. That range figure is an increase of over 60% of what the previous model could manage. This one could be fully charged in as little as around 2 hours and 15 minutes from a dedicated charging point. To help maximise efficiency, xDrive 45 e drivers get an e-drive button that lets them swap between auto e-drive, max e-drive and save battery modes. In the first of these settings, the car will only work on electric power alone up to 50 miles an hour. But if you select max, the car will have an all-electric top speed of 75 miles an hour. In the save position, the system sends as much energy to the batteries as possible for future use. So you can store it until later in your trip when you might want to drive around town with zero tailpipe emissions. Overall emissions for this variant are rated at 49 grams per kilometre, down from the 77 grams per kilometre for the previous generation X5 plug-in model. 
The difference that all this plug-in hybrid technology makes is clearly evident when you switch your attention to the conventional xDrive 40i petrol model, which uses basically the same 3-litre straight-six engine as you'll find in the xDrive 45e, but obviously without all the hybrid additions. Here, the combined cycle figure for a 5-seat model is 32.5 mpg, and the CO2 return is 197 grams per kilometre. But again, don't be put off by that if you're switching over from an equivalent previous generation X5 petrol model. A host of engineering changes should ensure that this G05 series car has taken a decent step forward in efficiency. These include the way that the cylinder head's been redesigned for the latest 350 bar injection pressures and now also features a particulate filter. Plus, there's now more intelligent cooling and a friction-reducing single-row timing chain. The xDrive 40i variance power plant is almost six kilos lighter than the equivalent engine in the previous generation X5 lineup too. Across the range, various efficient dynamics technologies are used to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto start stop system, as you would expect. And at highway speeds, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. Of course, the driver will also need to do his or her part. The figures we've just quoted assume that the car's being run in the drive performance control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy, and what's called a proactive driving assistant is activated. This links in with BMW's professional navigation system, enabling the car to detect braking situations in advance, such as when entering built-up areas, speed limit zones, corners and filter lanes, and prepare the drive system accordingly. You'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the centre dash infotainment screen's driving info section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen that rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. Optimised aerodynamics obviously make a significant difference to economy too, and BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains, these devices respectively located behind and ahead of the front wheel arches, their purpose being to reduce turbulence and therefore drag in the area around the front wheels. In addition, every X5 model has an active Airstream kidney grille at the front end, with slats that stay closed when initially you first move off, so helping the engine warm up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. Once that's achieved, the slats then open to aid cooling, but are able to close again at higher speeds to improve the car's slippery shape. What else might you need to know? Well, routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing that monitors oil level and engine wear, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car's travelled since its previous garage visit. You can check all of this using menus in the iDrive centre dash display. The centre dash screen's car section tells you the engine oil level, service requirements and your add blue level. Plus, the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup's needed, so you have plenty of time to book it. To help plan ahead for the cost of regular work, at point of purchase you'll be offered a BMW service inclusive package that lasts for three years and 36,000 miles. With this, after a one-off payment, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. You can also insure your car through BMW, though as most X5s will be funded with company money through a lease deal, this is likely to be bundled into that. As for insurance groupings, this xDrive 30D diesel is rated Group 45, a petrol xDrive 40i is rated at Group 46, and the M50D is rated at Group 50. The other big ownership cost with a car of this kind lies with depreciation, something that can often be easily forgotten about in the excitement of ordering a new 
car. With the BMW, you're on very safe ground as the most popular xDrive 30D variant always has a willing line of used buyers keen to snap it up on the second-hand market. This means used prices are strong. According to independent experts cap, for this derivative, you can expect a retained worth of 45% after three years and 60,000 miles, which means that at the end of this period, the M Sport trimmed xDrive 30D model we're trying here would still be worth 20 26,775 pounds. That's extremely class competitive. For two decades now, the X5 model line has defined the kind of car a large luxury SUV should be. No other model in this class is so easy to transition into from a large luxury saloon. But once you've done so, all the crossover qualities that people look for in this segment are present and correct. The more assertive looks, the commanding driving position, the additional practicality and the extra off tarmac ability. It's all there, but in a car that can take on twisty tarmac with astonishing confidence for something so high and heavy. We're pleased that this G05 series model handles so well because we weren't totally convinced by its F15 series predecessor in this regard. And BMW has managed to make it so dynamically adept while producing an even more convincing blend of rich, sophisticated luxury. This X5 will probably never reclaim the dominant market share its Mark I predecessor originally enjoyed, but BMW once again has the hardware to remind its closer German rivals just who really developed the luxury 4x4 sector in the first place. Of course, the copycat competition is now a lot tougher, and today there are rivals that could be said to shade this car in certain areas. You might choose a Mercedes GLE or an Audi Q7 for maximum interior space, a Range Rover Sport for off-road prowess, or a Porsche Cayenne for sharper tarmac handling. But can any of these rivals provide a more complete total package? That's another question. Not without reason do one in every three X5 owners stay loyal to the range when that time comes to change their cars. True, this might not be as handsome a design as it used to be, but it's still imposing, classy, as good as it needs to be on the mud, and now very special inside. Safer too, and more relevant, not only in terms of its lower running costs, but also its high-tech infotainment connected drive cleverness. And all of this on top of a range of virtues that more than ever offer as much motoring flexibility as you could ever need. We are, after all, looking here at a car with economy pretty close to that of an ordinary family estate, yet one that potentially can keep up with a hot hatch, scale the lower slopes of Ben Nevis, and take seven folk to the theatre when all is done. It is, by any measure, a very complete vehicle, and now perhaps the most accomplished all-round choice in a very talented segment when all is said and done. A benchmark, then. Just as X5s have always been. <laughs>